I'm sure you've seen our game forecast on WFAA on Saturday and Sunday mornings where we tell you what AccuScore is forecasting for that weekend's college football games and NFL football games. Here today to tell you a little bit more about what AccuScore is all about and to preview that big Texas OU game, our good friend Zach Rosenfield. How you doing, man? Good to see you, Josh. Uh, for, first of all, I... I know quite a bit about what AccuScore does and, and how you guys got started just from, from, from doing some research and, and talking to you, but some of our viewers may not be as comfortable and, and know quite as much. How did you guys get, get going and, and how did you guys, I guess, get to this national level that you are now? Well, AccuScore basically is a computer formula that uses teams and players' past performance over the last three to five years. Mm -hmm. In the cases of rookies or freshmen, what we do is we use composite stats and a what we think would be projected performances within that team. And then we use a 20,000 by 10,000 spreadsheet and we simulate each game one play at a time under real game conditions using 110 variables. And then we re-simulate that game 10,000 times to come up with a comprehensive forecast. Mm -hmm. Now it's a little bit different than the average layman fan might say, sure. you know, when they're watching that game, well right. that team's good, that team's not. So what we use is we kind of go away from the eye test right. and what you see and we go completely with math. Now, as you were telling me before we, we, uh, we started this segment, is that a few years ago, you guys went to Yahoo mm -hmm. and said, our stuff is better than what you guys are using. And how did that go? And, and how, how did you, you kind of get in the door there? Because now they're using your stats very regularly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it went well enough that I'm here today. Right. Uh, but, you know, we have uh, three great guys who lead the company, yeah. Jason Manassi, Gibby McCaleb, and Stephen O. And what mm -hmm. they did is they kind of came together to form a product, a company, and how to run the company. And they realized that they felt that they can do better projections than what Yahoo could do for fantasy sports. So they went up there to Yahoo, and they challenged them. And they said, okay, we cannot perform you. And through a series of tests, they were able to actually succeed. And Yahoo mm -hmm. saw the value and said, well, why don't we just go with AccuScore and let them power the simulations? So flash forward to you know, now we're 2000. And, eight, and uh, AccuScore has really been able to broaden the product from Yahoo to CBS Sports to ESPN and uh, most importantly WFAA. Sure, and we've been talking about this stuff a, a lot this football season. Give me a sense on how accurate you have been this season. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're going to call yourself AccuScore, I mean, the most important thing you can be is accurate. Sure. And all my friends can say, you know, so you guys are always right. Well, mm -hmm. I think in the world of sports, no one's going to always be right. But what we can be is very close to the whole more often than not. And looking mm -hmm. at college football, and we're here, you know, for the yeah. big game, that's why I'm in town. Sure. You know, we uh, ran some numbers, and, you know, there's been 209 wins this year against 65 losses, which is a success rate of 75%. You know, games within this region of the Big 12 involving Big 12 teams we're 39 and 5 overall for 89% accuracy, 6 and 0 within the conference. And we know that there's a Conference USA contingency here sure. in the, the Metroplex. Absolutely. 36 and 9 with the Conference USA teams at an 80% clip. Now, okay, looking for, like you talked about, you are here in, in town to, uh, today for this big game this weekend, te Texas OU. Um, and as you look at each game, like you said, you are simulating this thing. 10,000 times with, with, with your computer and when you come up with a percentage mm -hmm. that is or, or, or numbers or, or actually you know uh, stats you know forecasted stats that is an average of mm -hmm. what players put up over the simulations right yeah and absolutely that, that how, how that works? yeah I mean so if you take a look at tomorrow's game we have a projection of Sam Bradford throwing for 285 yards mm -hmm. that takes the best the worst in the middle and say through that that's 285 yards compared to Colt McCoy is gonna throw we project to throw for 225 right so if you look at the big picture, let's take, you know, let's take the average fan, for example, me. I uh, tend to lean a little bit towards Oklahoma, but the computer doesn't have a bias. The computer doesn't care what I like or what you like and what color red you're wearing or what color orange. Sure. The computer simulated the game 10,000 times, and within that simulation, Oklahoma won 73% of that time, totaling 7,300 of the simulations. Right, and, and another part of it that is fascinating is, is you can put in different variables. Say, okay, uh, I feel like, like or, or just taking a look at it, you know, if Colt McCoy is gonna turn the ball over more, then, then you've got a different scenario for that. If Sam Bradford, you know, doesn't play in the game, you've got a different scenario for that. So I, I think that is, is fascinating how, you know, you can take injuries in, into account and have different forecasts Say for, for TCU, you either got um, Andy Dalton's the quarterback or Jackson's mm -hmm. the quarterback because we're not sure who's going to play this week, but you have a different scenario for both. Yeah, it's actually something that we really utilized over the summer through editorial mm -hmm. when we started uh, you know, seeing all the craziness that was happening with the NBA and the trades. And what we did is we went ahead and re-simulated Jason Kidd with uh, the Dallas Mavericks mm -hmm. and saw what that trade was going to be like, and we said, Right. Uh oh. Yeah. But if you know, if you take a look at 
that's you know the next stage of what AccuScore is to not only be able to give a baseline forecast, but to really strip down. And what we were able to do this summer is create a custom simulation tool that allows uh, you know users and fans to go into the product and kind of alter the stats and then see what happens. And I think if you look at tomorrow's game, one of the thing, the big question is. Can Oklahoma get to, uh, pardon me, can Texas get to Bradford? Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with a young secondary, and can they get to him? So what we did is we uh, kind of bolstered Texas's stats on defense. We gave them two sacks opposed to one sack that we have, and also two interceptions. Now that's almost a 100% increase in defensive production numerical-wise, and we saw Texas's win probability go from 24% up to 51%. The interesting thing is that the composite score was 32 to 31, so you're looking for a shootout even if Texas can make some big plays. Interesting. But, but overall, you guys, as far as, as, as the simulations and projections, you guys have Oklahoma winning this thing. Yeah, I mean, comfortably by a three yeah. to one margin. And I think that whether, you know, if anybody's to say Texas is going to win or Oklahoma is going to win, I think anyone who has enough history of what's happened in the Cotton Bowl knows that anything can happen. The early 90s were ruled by a Texas team that was statistically not supposed to beat Oklahoma in the late 90s or the mid 90s John Blake came in there with a team that hadn't even beat hadn't right. won a game and was able to knock off Texas with the backfield of Ricky Williams and Priest Holmes mm -hmm. yeah. so I, I think that you know the numbers do support Oklahoma but you know within the pressure of the Cotton Bowl I think you're looking at two quarterbacks who have a history of concussions Texas with a running game that's a little undefined DeMarco Murray who's a little slow and you know not tested this year with mm -hmm. the knee a lot can happen. How much time left? What do you have for the Cowboys? Well, we know this is a big Cowboys audience. So what do you have for them this week? Cowboys Cardinals. Well, you know, the Cowboys are winning 71% of the simulations mm -hmm. against the Cardinals, and largely because statistically they're so loaded on paper, whether mm -hmm. it's Marion Barber or it's going to be Felix Jones. Right. Dallas is a great running game balance with Terrell Owens. Now, Owens might, be not, might not be getting as many receptions or as many yards, but balance that out with what he should be getting and what Witten's going to get, and you have a good situation. Now, 71% is one of the more lopsided uh, probabilities and simulations you'll see in the NFL because the teams are so close. Mm -hmm. But, you know, also a factor in that the Cardinals turned the ball over a lot. You know, they had a disaster sure. in New York a couple weeks ago. So, you know, we went ahead and uh, re-simulated the game and added two more interceptions uh, to Kurt Warner, and we saw that Dallas is going to win 85% of the time. So if Dallas can just do what they're supposed to do, continue with the continuity, I think Dallas should win that game. All right, Zach Rosenfield, appreciate Thanks. it, man. Thanks a lot, Josh.